Uh, welcome everybody. We have quite a, a crowd of uh, participants, I can see. Uh, my name is Petra Cherne Owen, and I will be moderating this together with um, Sai, who's hiding. Um, <laughs> and it's with my great pleasure that I can introduce Alia Herlach, because she comes from the same country as me. And she's a typeface and graphic designer based in Ljubljana, which is in Slovenia. If you never heard of the country, uh, well, Google it. Um, Alia holds master degree in graphic communications from the University of Ljubljana. And then she went on. Um, she was very interested in, uh, uh, in designing Arabic, Cyrillic, Greek, and Hebrew typefaces. So she followed her dream and she has worked as a font developer at Atlas Fonts in Berlin first, and then Dalton Mac in London. And she's very um, active in Slovenia now, uh, coming back to Slovenia. And she's organizing a lot of typographically related things like uh, Tipo Berda workshops. Uh, and she also teaches now at the Academy of Fine Arts and Design. Uh, and she also, I think that's very important to tell um, that she's co-founder of uh, Studio Type Salon, which is typeface design. Uh, agency basically, and um, she's also very active in worldwide typography events. So today she will talk about um, one project she did. She's fed up with it already, of course, as everybody who do um, extensive research into topic usually are. Um, but she researched, um, well, works of um, architect Plechnik. Um, that's uh, one of the most renowned Slovenian architects. And she went into archives, she went to libraries, she did quite, uh, quite precise research on, on his type forms, letter forms, his documents. He was also designing a lot of books and everything. And she will present this today at this talk. I think it's wonderful. She will take us through amazing typographic documents from Slovenian history and also some nice contemporary photos. But uh, most of all, it's really important to highlight the process which was behind the typeface which she developed and I think uh, it's quite a remarkable story to tell. So I will now ask the tech team to um, start the presentation. Hello, I am Alia Herlach, one of the co-founders of Studio Type Salon based in Ljubljana, Slovenia. I will present the theoretical part of our recently published typeface. It was based on research of letterings made by Joze Plečnik, the most renowned Slovenian architect who greatly influenced the formation of Slovenian identity, especially the Slovenian capital Ljubljana. Although his typographic contribution is somehow sidelined compared to his architectural works, it can be argued that he also had a profound influence on Slovenian typography. In our library, you can find the recent published typeface Plechnik, which is based on Plechnik's typography. During the development, we had an opportunity to examine a versatile archive of his originals, which I'm going to present in the further slides. I would like to start with this sketch that nicely sums up my presentation. As you have already guessed, this is one of Plechnik's sketches, but if you look closely, there is something handwritten. Posod dobro, doma najlepše. Slovenian saying which expresses that it's nice to go abroad and get experience from other cultures, but returning home or afterwards feels the best. This appreciation for home is clearly evident in his work and his working approaches. In a way, this sentence represents the reason this project actually happened. I have worked as a font developer in Berlin and London, and while living there, gaining the knowledge of font development on a larger scale, my appreciation for everything related to my home country increased. As I moved back to Ljubljana a couple of years later, I started to appreciate every little thing about my homeland and parallelly got the desire to focus my research and projects in connection to Slovenian typography. Yes, I know you might ask, what is Slovenian typography? In Slovenia, 
There are no independent type boundaries that would produce original typefaces. Therefore, the majority of movable, movable type was brought from Germany and Italy. Here we can see pages from the catalog from 1925 and feel the foreign influences of this design. Typesetters were using German and Austrian typefaces. However, there were artists and architects exploring the letter shapes and thus contributed to some uniqueness in typography of 19th and early 20th century. But can we actually talk about Slovenian typography without having any original typefaces? Punch cutters. The same question could also be asked nowadays. What is Slovenian design and could it be defined without Slovenian typefaces? These are some of the awarded projects from 2019 Brumen Biennale of Slovenian Design. And so I'm asking myself the question about Slovenian typography as I'm walking on the streets of Ljubljana, appreciating the surroundings buildings, surrounding buildings designed by Tjoža Prečnik, Tržnica Central Market, Žale Cemetery in Ljubljana, Brick Building for the Multiple Insurance Zajemna. It is difficult to avoid Plechnik's presence, the architect that is signed under the most recognizable buildings in Ljubljana. Among his variety of works, one could also find signage on the buildings and memorials he designed. This thought led us to dig deeper into the archives and explore his typographic legacy. We know there were no type designers until 21st century in Slovenia, but artists and architects were taking care of the editorial designs, books and magazines, exploring the letter shapes and thus influenced Slovenian typography. And that was also the reason me and my colleague Krista decided to learn more about Plechnik's work. In order to define his typographic style and design decisions, it was necessary to focus the research on his life. He lived in the end of the 19th and first half of the 20th century. He studied in Vienna, lived in Prague, but then decided to move back in Ljubljana and live there until his death in 1957. He reviewed the, we reviewed the archives of his sketches and based on the variety of his work in graphic design, defined his typographic style. It was also interesting to include his aspect of teaching and see his legacy through the work of his students. Plechnik not only created typography of numerous inscriptions on tombstones, monuments and building facades, but also left his mark on various graphic and typographic designs. Just by looking at his architectural sketches, we could already find the diversity of letter shapes and that he used, that he used for titling the projects. Letters are drawn by a hand with high precision and details. After the Second World War, majority of his architectural projects were tombstones and memorials, which included uppercase letters adjusted for engraving, carving into stone. One of the various examples of carved letters can be found in Križanka in Ljubljana. The sign is positioned above arcades. Plechnik not only created typography for signage, but also took care of graphic and typographic designs of diverse publications. This is a sketch of the cover from Dom in Svet magazine from 1928. Translated, home and world. He was designing covers for this magazine from 1923 
1930. And it was actually very difficult to find information about him designing them. He did not want to have this, his name written as the cover designer of the magazine. The way we found out it was his design was when the content of the magazine included his work as example in this photo. Ljubezen do domače zemlje The very important aspect of his work is love for his homeland. Who are less known by Slovenian history, I'd like to mention the position of Slovenia at that time, which I believe strongly affected his work. He was born in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, where Slovenian position was marginalized. Official language was German, and there were no universities in Slovenia. After the First World War, Slovenia became part of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. This is also the time when the University in Ljubljana was established. As Plesnik moved back to Slovenia, it was part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which after the Second World War became Social Federation Republic of Yugoslavia. To sum it up, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was increased nationalism in Slovenia and the idea of having our own country, using our own language and being able to study in our own country and appreciation for our history and roots affected the style of his work. We started our research with an examination of the archive at Plechnik House in Ljubljana, where the original typographic sketches drawn by the architect are held. The building used to be Plechnik's home, which is now turned into a museum with permanent and temporary exhibitions. Plechnik did not only design typography for many inscriptions, but also designed various printed materials. First is book cover for Gymnastic Association Ora. The style of the letters he used for the cover matches the year 1929 with details of Art Deco style. Letters on the second sketch are defined by slab serifs and strong stable shapes. The content of the book preserves his over. That connects those two sketches. What connects those two sketches are floral ornaments that could be found in many of his sketches. Their style could be traced back to the 12th century. Manuscripts from Stichna. Using this kind of ornament portrays the idea of nationalism and historicism in his work, presenting Slovenian legacy, legacy with details. And while focusing on the styles of the illustration and ornaments in his work, we discovered this sketch for a calendar of the St. Mohors Society. Beside nice illustrations and illustrated numbers, 1942, there is such nice lettering that has its own style we haven't come across before. Much more expressive with contrast and details on every letter. The shape of M, R and B resemble another period of our history. Year 1942 tells us it was his late work and also the Slovenian political situation as the three Slavic nations were united under one kingdom. Furthermore, this piece from the archive led us to the new path of his work that was showing his exploration with Cyrillic letters. I believe this was also part of his late works as he was living in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Official, official languages were Serbian and Slovenian and were using two scripts, Latin and Cyrillic. This invitation was made for an Orthodox church in Ljubljana using recognizable floral ornaments and modern Cyrillic lettering which could be referenced to the Codex Supra Sliensis from the 10th century that we can see on the right side. We found three variations of the cover for calendar of the St. Mohor Society from 1952 that resemble similar style as shown in previous slides. 
Letter shapes are uppercase, slightly condensed, with, co with contrast and thin serifs. If we compare letters M in the word Mohoreva, the letter shape is almost Greek. On the other hand, if we have a look at AR in the word Koledar, The shapes look very Cyrillic. Circular E's could be a reference to calligraphic style Unziala. Uncial. O's in the middle example resemble the slide of ornament ornamentation. Historicism being a big part of Lechnik's work, there is no surprise to find his explorations of the Gladkolitic script. Glagolitic script was developed from the Greek script and is the oldest known Slavic alphabet. It, were, it was used in the 9th century, mainly in Eastern and Croatia. The usage decreased by the development of the print because it used only one case letters, uppercase, which was not well suitable for long reading texts. He used glagolitic letters for his architectural plan one of those is for the church in Bosnia from 1943. Here I compare the Glagolitic script with also Latin letters that he used below the plan. He also applied some of the previous mentioned styles on the Latin letters uppercase letters with Greek, Cyrillic and Glagolitic influences with floral ornaments and initials referenced from the manuscripts. The way this original is set, we assume design was made for sac sacred printed matter. Antique, classical and modern. Preaching's work is often described as interwinement of classicism and modernism. His architectural style in this sense can be also in can be seen also in his typographic style. He studied architecture in Vienna under the mentorship of the famous secession architect Otto Wagner. At that time, the Viennese art movement secession was at its very peak with Otto Wagner as a leading member. Despite working for Wagner and collaborating at Vienna secession exhibition, exhibitions, Plechnik stepped away from the secessionist ideas and movement. He was more in favor of functional, modest and human architecture. We can confirm that his letters also re resist the Art Nouveau and Secession style and rather include classical approaches. After completing his studies in Vienna in 1898, Plechnik got scholarship and traveled to Italy, which left a strong impact on him and his work, strongly influenced by classicism. The shape of his uppercase letters resemble Roman capitals. His horizons were also broadened by his relocation from Vienna to Prague in 1911, when another aspect of architecture opened up to him, that of teaching. His teaching principles were mainly based on classicism and Greek antiquity. In his handwriting and sketches, he used Greek letters instead of Latin ones. For example, instead of Latin E, he wrote Greek uh, he used Greek sigma, and instead of Latin A, gro wrote Greek lambda. He also, we can also note the classicism in the forms of his letters. Classical proportions where letters fit two widths, square and half of the square. On the example on the top, O is very wide and S is very narrow. There is slight contrast in the thicknesses of the strokes in both sketches. One can also notice semi-serifs 
that are more prominent in the example below. He used dots instead of spaces, which can also be linked to the early Latin alphabet and Trajan column located in Rome. His influence on Slovenian typography as professor. It's important to mention Plecnik's influence on Slovenian typography through his students. He was teaching at the Faculty of Architecture, where he also lectured lettering. These examples of how to draw letters and figures were taken over by his students who became professors. Architect and professor Edo Mihajoc used this sheet for his students entitled Alphabet and figures based on Plechnik. Letters were drawn by hand with a ruler and compasses. He did not influence the students only on their architectural drawing and the typography on the drawings, but also graphic design and typography. Two, those two books were designed by Tone Bittens. Typhus Pletznik. Access to the archives of his original sketches was the basis for the development of the Typhus Pletznik that we published in spring 2021. It was not easy to decide on one specific style that would represent his legacy in a form of contemporary font. We wanted the typeface to perform well in longer texts and at the same time represent the distinctive features of his work. The typeface is not a digitalization of Plechnik's originals. It defines recognizable letter forms created by the architect's own hand. However, it was the overall aspect of the design that was even more important. The most important parameter in the Mayuskos design of the Plechnik typeface reflects the use of classical elements and forms in the architect's work. The classical proportions uh, the, classic, okay. the classical proportion is a distinctive feature of the Plechnik typeface, geometric shapes, sans serif strokes, sans serif stroke endings humanist style of terminals and low or barely noticeable contrast in the thicknessing of the strokes. The unique characteristic of Plechnik typeface are hidden in the details. Vertical cut terminals, vertical alignments, circular round shapes, Diagonal joints, the parameters and features designed for minuscules are also applied to minuscules and figures. Typeface combines four different weights with corresponding italics. Display style derived from the shape of Plitznik's columns, which widen with height. The so-called vertical growth of the, or thickening of the basic stroke towards the top. The resulting variant is even more unique and perhaps even more Plechnik-like. The newly created typeface represents typographic legacy and contributes to the development of Slovene typography as a distinctive visual representation of Slovene language. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alia. Mm -hmm. And I will be opening questions now for our public. You can type your um, questions into chat. We'll try to um, keep track of them. Um, and yeah, you are very welcome to ask questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the moderation. Okay. 
I think this is amazing travel through history with one person because he was also so knowledgeable about history and he was experimenting with different historical styles. Um, maybe I will start with one question. Uh, what was the most difficult obstacle you faced in the research behind the typeface, typeface design before you decided what direction to take and, and everything? What was the most difficult part? Um, actually, there are few um, aspects of it. Firstly, that already me and my colleague, we were doing the research and the design process together. So it is already, we needed while the whole process we needed to take this approach to listen to both of us to sometimes step backwards or step on the side and then listen to one another each other and also another aspect of it it is that plechnik is very known in our country in a way so there has been a lot of things already written or talked about him known so we wanted to take this aspect of being very neutral in a way that we didn't we didn't research or study him. So in a way we needed to make our own picture about him or his approaches or firstly understand him. He is a very interesting persona. Um, and then also making decision on which way to go because while we were making research in the archives of Plechnik House. We were digging and digging and somehow the hole got so big that it was difficult to decide on, decide on which direct direction actually to choose. So making a lot of decisions that were not only based on my idea, but also ideas or knowledge about that my colleague has and also maybe a few other people that were helping us in this research or with their ideas or their aspects so getting so many inputs and then making our own path um, yeah this was already challenging in a way because yeah there is such a versatile of his work and also like typographic work that no one did not uh, research so deeply yet yeah did you collaborate with any architecture historians? Um, we actually were talking already Anna Porok, who is uh, working at the Plesnik Archive. She was already kind of nega, um, leading us through the archive, um, like thematic, thematically and if we didn't know what is this for, what was this lettering made for, we were um, talking through, debating about it uh, with her. There are also a few graphic designers or architects that were already digitizing their work. So we were also interviewing them and trying to understand their aspects of digitizing typeface based on Plesnik's work. So there were already a few aspects um, and but actually the um, and there is also one architect who was again um, collaborating in some um, other ways um, in placing typography. So there were quite um, different ideas and then yeah, it just kind of opened and opened and really developed and the research and study. We have, we have another question in the chat. Uh, in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you define a brief for the typeface after seeing all the work he did? Yes, yes. Um, we, we needed to yeah, make a brief or define a brief. And even though it was more difficult after we saw, we went through the archives, um, our our decision was made uh, based on the idea of how our typeface is going to be used. And even though there, are, there is such a nice lettering, more expressive ones and more display-like ones, we wanted for maybe for our first project, if I can say that uh, very optimistically, um, that typeface, typeface would work well in um, as a body face. That was our first, the most important kind of brief in a way. 
and then we based um, our next decisions regarding each glyph, each uh, letter form, based on the aspect of working well in longer texts and then being also recognizable and pitching that he would be also happy with it, even though I would be afraid to ask him if he would agree on our decisions, but decisions, but it was also aspect of a present typeface, not only hundred year old one. Yeah, I think the direction where do you want to end, it's probably even more important than all the research and information you can gather, because this can only influence, of course, your decisions, but you must know uh, what, what's the purpose of doing it, of course. Exactly. And also thinking about not only enjoying uh, during the research and having fun with spending so much time or, on learning about some person, also having an idea how to honestly say sell it. Because it's not only about enjoying, but also thinking about perspective of type foundry and maybe broader idea of representation of Slovenian typography in a way of new typefaces. So also having a slight uh, one eye on the future, <laughs> I think we would say. Mm, yeah, so yeah, different approaches. And you are selling the typeface now, right? Yes, yes, it's available on our website. So Type Salon, it's our foundry where we are. Well, it's available. Cool. Mm. Any more questions from the audience, maybe? The audience still warming up to the Congress, I think, to the conference. Mm -hmm. um, they are not very um, chatty yet. Mm -hmm. um, but let's give them some more time. I will read the... Uh -huh, I see. One question from Aditya uh, about regarding uh, different scripts. Yeah, we, we are already working in multi-script um, typeface development. So uh, also, as I already showed you, um, there is a strong influence by Cyrillic script. And I think this is our next step because we would like to involve uh, other scripts as well, especially Yes, first Cyrillic, because it's also kind of connected to the whole story, and then um, try to expand, in, expand it with different other scripts. As a detail I mentioned, mentioned Glagolitic, we will see, but we, yes, as well, they, beside the Cyrillic. Mm -hmm. Shaima is asking, how does this typeface connect it to Slovenian heritage? Firstly, it is based on the lettering that Slovenian architect um, uh, designed or drawn. So taking these aspects of his design and his way of presenting letter forms 100 years ago, then showing these ideas on the typeface that is digital or can be used nowadays. So um, maybe talking about the works or letterings or ty typography uh, which some we would think maybe that there was none or that Slovenia is not that famous in this aspect or uh, recognized well known so still um, showing uh, local aspects of drawing letters and then presenting them in digital environment I would say that would be our idea of uh, Slovenian heritage. Mm -hmm. There's another question about the distribution. Do you plan to contact bigger distributors like Adobe Fonts, or for example? Mm, uh, hmm. So um, we decided one year ago when we um, started with our foundry um, to to um, release or to have our typefaces firstly in our foundry and then idea of being part of um, bigger distribu 
two distributors was nice, but uh, we are not yet sure uh, in which direction to go. So we are part of um, tip, Tipo Today, uh, Type Today, Type Tomorrow, Cyrillic parts. We are also in a few other um, recognizable distributors, but for the other, we, we, we are not yet sure how to connect with them or actually work um, with them or being part of, yeah. So, but we have recently uh, been um, launched with I Love Typography, um, which, yes, uh, it's uh, suitable for us at the moment. Well, I think might be some people from Adobe here, so um, yeah, they should, you know, step forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that should> be. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's important to say that Slovenia does not have a huge amount of type designers, mm -hmm. um, so it's even more. Well, probably people don't. Um, um, people like Alia, I think they're maybe too modest, you know, and I think opening up to international environment is really helpful and because knowledge can be um, gathered. Um, so these uh, networks are, are increasing and they are building up. So um, yeah. nothing is impossible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have another another question related to um, uh, historical part of research. How do you stop, basically? When do you know that it's enough, that you have enough information or gathered enough materials that you can actually start the concept and designing and things? Um, I think that line that really helped us was um, the research actually started as part of um, Foundings by Ministry of Culture of Slovenia, and we needed to finalize the project by 2019. So this was the first part uh, research, and then already some um, limited character set. So this helped us to figure out the deadlines and also to start with research and then progress to uh, typeface development. And then another aspect was uh, exhibition in Ljubljana at Plesnik's house, where the archives are. We had um, uh, exhibit we exhibited exhibited the whole project um, in this summer. So that was another uh, deadline in our heads um, in a way that we stopped with research and then uh, made developed um, project. It, until the limit that we set to ourselves, time-wise and also um, amount of work we needed to finish it, which is, I think, um, the problematic part of typeface design overall if we don't have um, big custom work and being dependent on bigger clients uh, uh, in retail, yeah. So, uh, and then, while I was preparing for this presentation, I again um, took a bit of time into researching further and while doing it, I again opened another Pandora box and started dig deeper and deeper and deeper and uh, I was happy that uh, the timeline was very short and very limited so I needed to finish this representation in a way otherwise I would search and talk with people and debate about it and so it was very nice to have, knowing that 2nd december yeah it's going to be finished for this part of the research so yeah maybe in case uh, another projects um, in this manner will show up yeah, we will start to dig, dig again and or maybe develop either other scripts or other styles. Mm, so yeah, this is how we are trying to 
um, plan our schedule our um, work in, within the foundry and studio yeah i think although it doesn't sound um, sound uh, right but um, deadlines and constraints are usually a good push and uh, they, are, they have positive influence on the projects definitely well thank yes. you very much alia um, if there are no more prison, uh, no more questions i would invite everybody to go to the hangout room where you can also hang out with Aya and others, of course, um, and we can chat informally there um, right now. So Thank you. switch there. Thank you very much, Alia. Thank everyone who joined.